Hello friends, this is Mrs. Moore. Today we are going to be reading one of the books from my favorite chapter book series, Junie B. Jones. All of the Junie B. Jones books are written by Barbara Park. And today we're going to be reading Junie B. Jones, Shipwrecked. Now what we're going to be doing is reading chapters one and two and my hope is that you will love it so much that you and your family will go to either your school library or your local library and check out this book and finish it up together. Let's read. This is her journal. Friday. Dear first grade journal, today is the end of the week. Mr. Scary is taking attendance. Attendance is the school word for who isn't here today. There are lots of children out sick in room one. I am going to count them, I think. I will be back in a minute. Okay. Here is a teensy problem I just ran into, because how can I count the people who aren't here on account of they didn't show up apparently? Taking attendance is harder than it looks. From Junie B, first grader. I put down my pencil to think about this situation, only I didn't even have time to concentrate hardly, because all of a sudden there was a noise on the other side of the room. I turned my head to look and splatto! A boy named Roger throwed up on the floor. It was the disgustingest thing I ever saw. Also, the air did not smell delightful. I quick held my nose and closed my eyes. Only too bad for me, cause my dumb bunny eyes have a brain of their own. And they kept on sneaking peeks at the splatto. It was Cheerios, I believe. Finally, I put my head on my desk and I covered up with my arms. Only just then, more trouble happened. And it's called, a boy named Sheldon couldn't stand the splatto. And so he jumped up from his chair and he ran straight out of room one. And that was a surprise, I tell you. Mr. Scary ran after him. He brought Sheldon back into Jiffy. Then he quick called the school nurse, Mrs. Weller, on the phone, and he told her that we need her help right now. Hurry, he said, fast. And so Mrs. Weller zoomed to room one as fast and as, as a speedy rocket. And then she hurried over to Roger and she talked to him in a calmy voice. And she said, everything is going to be okay. Roger hanged his head, real embarrassed. I felt sorry for that guy. Also, he was making me ill. Finally, Mrs. Weller helped him get up from his chair and she held his hand and she took him to her office. After that, room one could not do any work on account of how could you do work with splattle on the floor? Only hooray, hooray, because pretty soon our janitor named Gus Valoni came rushing through the door. I jumped right up when I saw him. Gus Valoni, it's me, it's me, it's Jenny B. Jones, I hollered out. Roger throwed up. Roger throwed up! Gus Valoni winked at me. Then he went straight to Roger's desk and he took out his important janitor equipment and he sprinkled powder all over the splatto. And wowie wow wow, that stuff sweeped up like a miracle. We could not believe our eyeballs. Whoa, said my friend named Lenny. See, whoa, said my other friend Jose. That powder is like magic. I sniffed the air. Yes, it is like magic, Jose, I said. Plus now it smells lemony fresh in here. Other children sniffed too. Mmm, it does smell lemony fresh, said a girl named Shirley. I wish I had some of that stuff for my mother. She loves to clean up messes. Mine does too, said my bestest friend named Herbert. Then all of a sudden, 
Herb springed out of his seat very excited. Wait, hold it. My mother's birthday is on Sunday, he said. And so that's what I'll get her. I'll get her a tub of that magic powder. What's the name of it, Mr. Valoni, huh? What's it called? What's it called? Gus Valoni's face went kind of funny. He glanced his eyes at Mr. Scary and then back at Herbert again. Finally, he ran his fingers through his bald hair and he said the name of it. Uh, vomit absorbent, he said kind of quiet. It's called vomit absorbent. At first, Herbert just stood at his desk very frozen. He did not say any words. Then after a minute, he did a little shiver and he sat back down. Maybe I'll just draw a picture, he said. Gus Valoni nodded. Then he packed up his stuff and he waved goodbye to room one and Mr. Scary walked him into the hall. While he was gone, Sheldon put his lunch sack on his head. As soon as Mr. Scary saw it, he tried to take it off, but Sheldon held on tight. No, don't, I need this, he said. If I stay in here, I won't catch Roger's germs. I raised my eyebrows at that remark. Yeah, only I don't get it, Sheldon, I said. How can you catch Roger's germs? Cause Gus Filoni just sweeped them up in a bucket, remember? Sheldon talked to me through his bag. Roger's germs aren't just in the bucket, Junie B, he said. Whenever somebody throws up their germs, shoot out in the air all over the place. Then if somebody else breathes that same air, those germs can get sucked right up their nose nostrils. I did a little cringe at that information. Then I looked all around in the air and very slow, I lifted my hand and I closed my nose nostrils. Room one watched me. Then one by one, they closed their nose nostrils too. And so all of us held our noses tight with our fingers and we didn't breathe for the whole rest of the morning. It's not easy to hold your nose and eat a sandwich. You cannot swallow good like that. Also, you can't actually breathe. The reason I know this is because room one kept on holding our noses while we ate lunch. My ears felt blocked when I chewed. I tapped on my friend Herbert. I am not enjoying my cheese sandwich today, I said. Me too said Herbert. I am not enjoying my sandwich too. Plus I don't even know what I'm eating because I can't taste what's under my lettuce. I thought for a minute. Then I tapped on him again. Yeah, only what if you're eating something you hate? I said. Herb thought too. Then he quick put down his sandwich and he lifted up the bread so both of us could see. We leaned our heads in real close. Lenny and Jose leaned their heads in too. Hmm, said Jose. This is only a guess, but I'm thinking tuna salad. Lenny shook his head. I'm thinking ham spread. Herb made a face. I'm thinking I'm done, he said. After that, he got out his apple and he tried to take a bite only he couldn't actually get it in his mouth on account of he was still holding his nostrils. Finally, Herbert got frustration in him. I give up, he grouched. Then he let go of his nose and he breathed in a big sniff of air. Ah, air, he said. It looked good to do that. I let go of my nostrils and breathed too. Ah, air, I said. Next to me, May's whole mouth came open. She did the cuckoo sign at us. You two are crazy to do that, she said. Dirty, nasty germs are getting sucked right up your nose this very minute, I bet. I looked surprised at that news. Really, May, I said. Thank you for telling me that. Then I leaned over next to her and I breathed out my nose air on her shoulder. There, all gone, I said. May did a gasp. <gasps> she hollered real loud. 
Then she jumped right up and she tattletailed to Mr. Scary at the front of the table. Mr. Scary, Mr. Scary, Judy Jones breathed nose air on my shoulder and now I've got germs on me, she yelled. Mr. Scary kept on eating his lunch. He was pretending May was not there, I believe. May kept on tapping on his arm and she wiped her shoulder. Nose air, nose air, nose air, she hollered in his ear. Finally, Mr. Scary stood up real calm and he walked May back to her seat. Boys and girls, I know that many of you are still worried about what happened to Roger this morning, he said. And I promise that we'll talk more about this after recess, okay? But right now, all of you need to release your nostrils and eat your lunch. He stood there and waited. One by one, all of us let go of our nostrils, only not Sheldon. Instead, Sheldon ducked his head under the lunch table and he said he was looking for his pickle. I peeked at him under there. He was hiding under his napkin, holding his nose. When the bell finally rang for recess, room one was the first class out the door. Fresh air, fresh air, fresh air, we all shouted very joyful. Then all of us breathed big snorts of breath because Roger couldn't have shot his germs all the way outside, probably. After that, we skipped and jumped and clapped and played, except for not Sheldon and not May. Sheldon sat down and held his nostrils some more, and May went to the water fountain and washed her shoulder. That was chapter one and chapter two of the book Shipwrecked by Barbara Park. I hope you decide to go to the library and check out this book and finish it up.